In this video, we'll explore the different options for setting up your classes on .trost maps. There are two main options for adding classes. One option is to set up your entire school at once using a spreadsheet. This is useful at the start of the academic year when all of your classes change and you want to clean up old accounts. We'll explore this at the end of the video. The other option is to add your classes one at a time. Let's add a new class. Fill in the details about your class and then click Submit. Don't worry if you haven't created the relevant teacher accounts yet, you can always allocate teachers later. This pop-up will explain the different options for adding students to your class, which involves varying amounts of work from you. The quickest option is to give out a URL to your students that will automatically enrol them in the class. The advantage is that you don't have to do any setup yourself. The disadvantage is that you don't have initial control over what details students register with, although you can always edit these later if the details are wrong. And don't worry if you accidentally close this message before copying the link. You can find this registration link in the class information here. Let's follow this link and see what students can see. As you can see, it's already chosen the correct school for them and you can see the class they're about to join. If students have a G Suite, Microsoft or Firefly account, they can always link their account with this, preventing the need to enter further details or setting a password. Once they fill in the form, they will receive an automated email with a link to activate their account. As students register, they will appear in your class list here but let's instead manually add students ourselves. Just click on the Add Students button. You can add multiple students at the same time using this box here. As per the instructions, you can either include the email address of each student, or if it isn't readily available, or students don't have school email addresses, you can leave it out. You can always manually type your students in this box. On each line, write the surname, then first name, and then optionally the email address, each separated with commas, as per the instructions. But it's much easier to copy from a spreadsheet. In your school data spreadsheet, whether say Microsoft Excel or Google Sheets, have two or three adjacent columns, the first with surname, the second with first name, and optionally a third with email address. Then drag over the cells excluding the headers, press Ctrl and C to copy, or right click and press copy. Press Ctrl and V to paste your cells, or right click and press paste. When you continue, you'll be able to review your input to check you've put it in properly. It will also detect if there's potentially matching students. This is particularly common if students have already registered independently before you set up the class. Check your inputted information is correct. And for any potentially matching students, choose what action you want. Since Jamie Frosty is already in a class, there are three options. You can move them from their old class. But if you change this move to add, you can keep them in their old class while adding them to this class, allowing the student to be in multiple classes. This is particularly useful if you want to create intervention groups that you can set separate work to. Or thirdly, it might be that this is not the same Jamie Frosty and they happen to share the same name. If this is the case, just choose Create New. The students have now been added to your class. If you supplied email addresses, the students will instantly get an email with a link to set a password so they can log in. But here we didn't set email addresses, so students will still need to enrol in your class. Again, we can use this URL to allow students to join the class. If we go to this URL, you can see that students are asked to choose from a dropdown who they are. You can select between classes on the left here. It should be noted that students don't necessarily need to use their school email address, particularly if your school doesn't provide email accounts. They can use a personal email address or a parental one. 
if the part of their email address after the at symbol doesn't match your school's domain name, for safeguarding reasons, you will not be able to see their email address. If the email addresses appear as personal address when they shouldn't be, your school's domain name is probably incorrectly set and you can update it from Manage School Settings. An occasional problem is that students fail to receive the activation email. If the account remains unactivated after you've given the student some time to set up, you can click the student row and additional students if you wish and click the force activation button. You'll see a message saying their password has temporarily been set to password, but they will now be able to log in from the Dr. Frost Maths homepage. When you've selected a student, you have options to move the class they're in, remove them from the class, change their password, or delete their account. You can also edit their details. You can archive a student if they've left the school. This means they'll still be able to log in if they wish, but they won't appear when searching for students when you set work. You can see any archived students by scrolling to the bottom of your class list. A common occurrence is that students fail to use a URL you provide them with, instead registering independently. They will even be warned if they try to do this. But if they do, you can find them in students with no class on the left. You can then select a student here and move them to the right class. Let's quickly check out the class information on the left. You can change the class name, and year group, and change what teachers and schemes of work are allocated to the class. I explain schemes of work on the Manage Schemes of Work page. Note that deleting a class does not delete the students in it, just the grouping of students. In the scenario where a teacher accidentally deletes your class, if you set up again, it will detect all the existing student accounts in the manner we've seen, and you'll still be able to see all the homework and assessments you've set to the class. The last feature to note is the Use Demo Class Account button. This allows you to see what it's like being a student in that class. Any homework or assessment you set to the whole class will also be set to the class's demo account. You can even try the homework yourself. Please note that to get out of this demo account, you'll need to log off and back in as yourself. Finally, let's deal with whole school class setup. As mentioned, I recommend you use this at the start of each academic year when all your class groupings change and students both join and leave the school. Go back to add class at the top of the class list and click this link here. You will be given a link to an Excel spreadsheet to download and fill in. Fill in your spreadsheet. As before, email addresses are optional. Note that it's not possible to directly link students to G Suite, Microsoft or Firefly accounts here. But the students will be given the opportunity to when they finish off their registration. Now just select this spreadsheet to upload. There are two modes for spreadsheet imports and it's important you read the instruction text here or you could do a significant amount of damage. The first option is if you want to set up the entire school, all existing class groupings will be deleted. The second option preserves existing classes, but allows you to add additional classes. We'll choose the first option. The wizard will tell you what classes it's going to create and any previously unactivated accounts it's going to delete. Below you can see the rows in the spreadsheet. Where there's a potentially matching existing student, you have the option to choose that existing student or create a separate account. For security reasons, please enter your normal login password. I'm not going to press the finish button now as I wipe all my school's classes, but this will finish the process and you will be given instructions about archiving student accounts that are no longer in use. Such students that are no longer in a class will appear in the Students with No Class tab 
as we explored early in the video, but their old class will no longer exist.